and we are we are live hello my friends welcome to talking football soccer talk show i'm your host nelson vieira and with me is andre perdigão our always usual commentator and let me start to say that is a great pleasure that after two years we are we are able to be back in a program that we left like it seems like uh, it it seems like it was yesterday isn't it yeah more or less hello nelson <laughs> hello folks yeah it like was yesterday like but honestly it was two years ago it was two years ago <laughs> yeah that that's 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 incredible it was already two years how time passes and how yeah. things work, worked out and in that time we we had the same this same kind of talk show but in a different system and now we are here in a different way but the truth is that we are here and we are ready to go so uh andre we have some hot topics to to, to talk here today and uh let's yeah. start with uh, let's start here at home let's start with portugal we have some situations here going on with the competition stoppage and some situations with uh, some of our clubs what do you want to to uh, to head to our conversation to start well to start i would like to bring to the table the subject of sporting lisbon and the way they spend 10 million euros in a manager <laughs> that didn't want nothing yet well that's he right. won that's one right. league cup or whatever but uh but Sporting, they, historically, they are one of the three biggest teams in Portugal. You know, uh, let's say it, they are the top three because we have Porto, Benfica and Sporting, you know. Right, right. And this is our three main teams. Of course, the last few years we have Braga coming in also. Um, but Sporting decided to, you know, acquire this manager for 10 million euros and actually it's a manager who was managing the sporting braga right and he was there like for two months or something like that and that for me sounds a little bit weird like how it seemed that wants to be you know uh, at the top level in portugal decided to acquire spent so much money in a manager uh, that he didn't prove nothing at all. I'm not saying he's a bad manager, it's not that. I'm just saying this on the perspective of a team, how possible is, what's the project behind, what's the policy behind this, this thing of acquiring a manager with no proof at all. He actually didn't finish his course of manager yet. So right. That's true. That's see, true. How do, you, how do you, how do you explain as a president of a club? How do you explain to your supporters and to your fans that you are spending ten million euros in a manager that had won nothing? Especially when we are talking about the club, he wants to win because I can even remember the last time they won the our league. Yeah, so that's right. Having that's right. this, having this. The recent history of sporting, you know, with very bad problems they had with their last president, and you know, and and the attacks and on in the academy they have, and, you know, players leaving and a lot of things happening around. Uh, this president nowadays have all the supporters of the team, well, not all, but a big, a big part of the supporters against him. Right. That's so right. it's a divided club. So it's a divided club. How this manager can, how the, how this president can explain their supporters? We are acquiring this manager for 10 million euros, just because. Uh, yes, yes, that's you know, right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, that's the interesting thing for me because, and once again, I want to leave this in here clearly. Uh, I'm not saying he's a bad manager. Right. What I'm saying is he proved nothing yet. And for a team as big as Sporting in Portugal, that 
all seasons try to reach to be on the top three some a few years with George Zuz, they actually was one championship for one point uh, going in, in the international competitions and things like that how a manager can explain to their supporters we are acquiring this manager for 10 million euros it doesn't have nothing proved yet especially when you have big problems on your team as it is it's, you know <clears throat> lack of of players you know the structure it's actually it sounds to me that sporting no longer have structure inside because it's some sort of war inside of it it looks like for me someone is waiting for the president to fall to get in so they are not together and that's really bad so on the perspective yeah, true true that's a, right so on a perspective of a supporter you need some explanations because too many years without winning nothing. I mean, major titles, of course. I'm not talking yeah, yeah, title right, or right, right. World Cup. I mean, the championship. Um, after so many years and with the recent dark history that Sporting had, how can you explain this? Because supporters want to win and they want someone they actually can afford and do something. You know, maybe he will do. I'm not saying he will not. I'm just saying it's a risky move for doing that on this kind of time. Uh, specifically because, and now you, we can start blending stuffs together in here, like a puzzle. How? Because Sporting have a few problems on, you know, financial problems, like most of the, the teams in Portugal, except Benfica. As far as I've been told, they show, you know, positive uh, positive financial, um, right. but the rest of them are down, and Sporting is one of them, and they spent 10 million euros in a young manager, so yeah. it's a risky move, and now you have the stoppage on the on the championship and the competition, so you don't have income for the supporters to go to the stadiums and things like that. That's right. Uh, the television, mission and things like that. So how can you handle this thing? I don't know. I'm just saying it. It sounds to me a very, very risky move for right, Sporting right. to do that. Uh, yeah, it's a, it, it is a risky move, and we have to really think about it because when we see a, a club like Sporting that has so many um, financial uh, difficulties and makes these kind of investments. Uh, there, there's something, something wrong because we are talking about a team that is not fighting for anything, and decide after they lost the opportunity in the last competition, they decide to bring a new manager. Like uh, yep. in the middle, in the middle of the season, and then happens this: the 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 competitions are are stopped. So it seems yep. like. It seems like a, a, an, an horror movie, almost. Yeah, but on the other hand, I understand some people will say, well, Sporting, they don't have financial problems at this point because they sell, they sold Bruno Fernandes, Bruno Fernandes for right. 6 million or 70 million. I can, I can precise the amount. Uh, but still, for this season, it's one thing, well, you can average a fair play thing, well, okay, in there. But it's still 10 millions on a manager. And I don't believe that the manager that been acquired for 10 million euros, he will, he will have a, a wage that right. low. That's you know right, what I mean? that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I understand. No, it's true. Manager. So, on a long term, on a long term situation, it will be a little bit cool. Now, for me, but... The only way that I can understand this thing is if the project of sporting it's a long term project, so rebuilding a team from the scratch, that's why they bring in a younger and new manager, mm, you know, right. trying to build from scratch. But on that way I can understand, but if I was a sporting supporter, I, I didn't care, I want results right now. And if the thing goes wrong, right. Right. So the, the club will have all the supporters against them, 
because they will turn out saying, well, you spent 10 million euros on a manager, we didn't want a thing, and we don't have any players for the future. Yeah, this yeah, is, right. This is, a, right. this is the kind of thing, it's a, it's a risky move. Uh, for the, for the few things that I've seen as a Ruben Amorim as a manager in Braga, it's really hard to say. I'm not saying he's a bad manager. It's not. Actually, he looks like a good manager because Braga is playing a really interesting football. But Braga was playing an interesting football anyway with Sapin, especially on the European competitions. Yes, the Sapinto situation is another one that it's uh, kind of difficult to understand. Uh, uh, everything that happens around Sapinto, the, the wise of his being uh, sacked. No, yeah, but the thing is, what I'm trying to point in here is actually the fact that Braga was playing really good, at least on the international competitions. In the Europa League, they are playing really good with Sapin. Well, yeah, in the internal com the home competitions, a bit different. A lot of ties here and there. Well, okay, fair enough. But he was on a fourth place or a third place when he left. That's right, that's right. Well, that's he, right. Was, he was a stage group of Europa League. I don't, I don't see the problem. Why sending Sapinto away and bring Kuba and Amorim? So, and actually, when Kuba arrived, he just keep on going with, with the work as already done. That's right. So I actually that's I right. didn't not, I didn't notice any difference. So the only thing I can accept is, Kuba and is actually a good manager, because Sapinto was doing a great job in there, and he left. Kuba and Amorim comes up. Keep on going with his ideas and do his way of his ideas of football. The players do the same thing. Keep playing well, so you can have in here a little bit of a proof that he's actually a good manager. But the question is, he's actually as good. He actually is good manager enough for for a level that where the goal is to be on the second, on the first place. Right. You know, right. because in Braga we have to be honest. We have to be honest. Braga can try to be champion in Portugal, but it will be really, really hard. So That's the thing right. is That's on the supporters right. on the on the supporters perspective is if you don't win the championship, but if you actually qualify to Champions League or Europa League it's a very successful uh, season. On the yes. other hand, in sporting, True. you don't qualify to Europa League or Champion League. It will be a disaster. Yeah, so right. So the standards will higher. So is he good enough for to deal with this kind of thing? So, but anyway, this is this is the kind of thing that the supporting Lisbon fans have to. Think about it and wait to see the to see how the thing is going or what's going to happen. All the future will say, and with this stoppage on the on the competition, it actually can be good more or less between months because players can't be together to practice. But when this you know when, when this emergency state that we have in Portugal, this lockdown, stop, finished. We actually have a little period of time for the manager to actually practice with the players or that can be extended and then you can see uh, if it was actually a good move or not. But if it isn't, well, it will be a really, really bad move for sporting. But that's just my opinion. Because, right. I, rem because I remember I remember Chelsea paid 15 million euros for Jose Mourinho back in the time when he won the Champions League with Porto and he went to Chelsea. Right. And, well, at, at that time, Mourinho had two international titles. Yeah, true, and true. And a few true. more titles. So he had proof, he had some proof that he can actually put things to play. Uh, I'm not saying Ruben and Mourinho will never have that. He will for sure, because it's too young. He have a lot to learn. He can go forward and put the things to play. 
but dealing with this pressure of the universe of sporting nowadays, it will be really, really hard for him. That's right. That's right. But it anyway. seems like right. Uh. <laughs> All right. So, and uh, right now uh, we were talking about the situation of the competition stoppage and the way that the clubs and uh, the, the federations are dealing with it uh, about um, this situation with the virus and uh, some theories has come to has come up but uh, truth be told there is there is no 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 nothing nothing at all to to work with so far how's the solution which kind of solution can we can we find on uh, on the on this well talking about specifically on portugal on portugal competition for me it's actually the season had to finish need to be finished it doesn't matter if it is in september july August, whatever, it had to finish. So one of the solutions that I see that could be really, really interesting for Portugal, at least on this paradigm that we have in Portugal as the competition it is, it's actually wait for this thing to to calm down or to be lifted the emergency state in Portugal and to come back to the competition. So it doesn't matter because nowadays the Euro Cup is already suspended, so it's not happening this season. So that's okay. That will be yeah, right. that's already right. decided. It have been pushed forward for 2021. So the thing is, a good way for Portugal to deal with that, it's actually extend this thing for the holidays, the the vacations period, you know, July, June. Yeah, right, uh, right. So the good thing is, finished. The 2020, this season, it doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter, in October, it can go, it can actually reach October or November, it doesn't, doesn't care, but it have to finish, because one of the good solutions that they can do, it's actually the season to, to, to uh, 2021, can start a little bit further in time, like right. in December right. or November, but what they, what our federation can do, it's actually erase the League Cup. Because the League Cup, it's a very, very hard time, especially for the teams that are playing international competitions. Because it's too many games next to others, because we have to break on the Christmas, then we start in January. And in January until, until the last days, we have a lot of games straight, so so what they can do, it's like, we, and it's the youngest competition that we have in Portugal, we can through that way, suspend that one for one year, you know, yeah, right. and start playing two games a week, you know, you play on Sunday and Wednesday, it doesn't matter, then you can go forward and actually, actually, you, you started, you started ahead, but you can come back in time during that period you know because we are talking like in four weeks you can play eight games yes yes so true true are, are eight weeks it means two months you know you can bring those back so these two months because the season starts in august august like august september yeah right, then october right. you know and if September, you will have this delay because next season can actually finish not in May but in June. Yes, so, true, true. And then you can the things back together. But that's that's for me the basic solution for this for this season. Because the thing is, who will be the champion this year? Well, just before the coronavirus come up, a few weeks before. Benfica were ahead seven points. Right. And then right, they right. dropped down seven points. Porto steps forward one point. So the competition breaks down and stopped. And Porto is ahead one point. So in one hand, it's not fair to declare Porto champion right now. 
the same way it's not fair to declare Benfica champion because they were in the first place on the first turn of the on the first turn of the competition. So if you know what right. I mean. Yes, it's it. in four or five games, if Benfica can drop seven points and Porto won eight points in, in three in four games if I'm not mistaken. Nobody can say it for sure. And for the rest of the season the thing cannot happen again. Yes, that's true. That's still true. missing like ten games, I guess. Come on, we are talking about thirty points on the table. It's not like in England. Yeah. Come on, Liverpool is thirty points ahead. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right, right, difference. right. That's right, that's so right. The thing is in in the particular case of Portugal, it needed to be finished. There is no way around it. There, because there is too much money involved, you know, sponsors, uh, transmission rights and things like that, and have to finish. It doesn't matter if it will be later or not, but erasing the next season, League Cup, I guess it's, it will be the best, the best solution. Because we hope next season we will have champion, Champions League and Europa League. Yeah, right. right. Uh, well, I, at least I hope this pandemic thing will be completely erased. So, that thing actually, if you finish this thing, uh, at least the Portuguese season, but then we can stretch this for the another competition. And because the idea is exactly the same. Uh, so, you have the teams that, if you finish the competition, even if it's late, you have the teams that can qualify to international competitions, you know, like Champions League and Europa League. Right, right. They, they qualify for The only problem we see in here is the playoff thing. The playoff is the hardest thing to do. And the solution for that, and the other competitions, will have, even if it's stretched a little bit, the Champions League have to stretch to it. Yeah, right, right, And right, the Champions right. League pro. And for me, if we stretch all of this thing, the Champions League will end after all the, ch the championships are over. Yeah, so, right. Because it will keep on. So, <clears throat> that's one way to see the things. I don't know if it's the best solution, but at least it's the way I can see the things. Yeah, to work. That, that's a solution. That's a solution. That's probably the, the best solution we can find right now. That's that's reality. As a, as a football fan, yeah, it is a solution, but, you know, you have higher powers involved. <laughs> right, and right, right, we right, can that's true. <laughs> and present some solutions, then they have to figure out where it's best. Right. That's probably one of the solutions that I can come up with, at least at this point. I don't know if they have any different one, because I don't see it as fair to not give champions to any team in any country right. in Europe, at least in Europe, this season, because it doesn't make any sense. Right. Liverpool fans, they are waiting years to be champions, almost 30 years, no, 30 years in fact. 30 years, that's right, 30 years, 30 years. Well, they are 30 points ahead, and this thing comes up, and no champion this season? Right, right, right. Doesn't make Yes, what it about makes those no teams sense, there are Look at Germany. They have at least three teams can can reach a title. You know, Leipzig, Dortmund, Bayern, Munich. They are like glued together. Right. Uh, That's true. That's true. That's so true. In Spain, in Spain, Barcelona and Real Madrid, they are actually glued. We also see that it's close by, but a little bit distance. But yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. France, we can. Uh, because, you know, PSG is like 15 points ahead or whatever. In Italy, you have Juventus, Lazio and Inter. They are almost glued together each other. Well, Juventus have a little bit of an advantage. They are ahead. They won Internazionale Milan also. But they are still close neck to neck. So, as long as it is, mathematically speaking, reachable for you to be to win, it's not fair to waste that time and that effort. It doesn't make any sense to close the, the championships. Yeah. Give that close all the championships and 
no champions this, this season. Doesn't make any sense. Right. Because that thing will bring, that thing will bring another subject to the table. And actually, in a in the lower competitions as Portugal, because let's be honest, I I understand a lot of people will not like me to say this, but we are a lower competition if we compare it to Spain or uh, to England or even to Italy. We are below them, not only the quality, but in in a lot of stuff involved, you know, financially, uh, especially. So. Portuguese teams actually need to go to international competitions in order to get money. Yes, that's right, that's so right, that's right. What's going to happen? Well, there is no champions. Who is going to the Champions League next year? Who are going to the to the Europa League next season? Come on, because these teams actually need the money. <laughs> yeah, that, so, no, that's right, that's right, yeah. that's real, that's real. That's real. There is no, there is no back plan for, for this kind of situation. Never had, you know, never existed the back plan, a plan B. Let's say it. so. Yeah. This, yeah. this kind of, this kind of teams, they actually need the international competition in order to acquire money to balance their accounts. So it's really important for the seasons to finish. Yeah, and, and give it a little bit of true ball as it is. Yeah, because and right but now, that's just right now we are having some situations that uh, even today I saw of, uh, I saw some news mostly in England that um, they are having a situation in the lower competitions, which there was a club I they, they spoke about the club right now I don't remember their their names uh, the name very well. But I think it was on national one, if I'm not mistaken, that they won, I think, around 20 matches in a row. But they, but uh, the league decided to cancel the, the that league, the national oh, yeah. one league, and take all the credits and all the merits that uh, the team won. So they were close yeah. to come to professional league. And they lost the opportunity, and, just out of the blue, like nothing happens. Yeah, exactly. The same thing we can talk. You can go a little bit higher if you want. You go on the on the championship. Well, Leeds United are fighting back to come to come to the Premier League. They are actually playing really well. They are ahead on the on a champion on the championship. And now the thing is cancelled, it's suspended, so. Nobody knows what's going to happen. <laughs> right, right, right. So, this is a little bit bad. But as I was saying, we are talking first about, you know, the idea as I started on the, on the, Port on the, on the Portuguese competitions, of course. Because, let's be honest, this is the ones that we are more familiar with. Right. Uh, at least, um, I see the thing like that. Uh, but still in Portugal, just just before we change the, the country, let's say, even the competition, if you allow me. <laughs> there, is, there is at least one thing that I would like to bring the subject to the table. Right, of course, bring it's it. About the, it's about the sport justice. Yes. The sport justice. Because in Portugal, everybody knows this has been news all around the world, at least all around Europe. I have seen news about corruption and a lot of things involved in Portugal on, on the football. Uh, in Italy, in England, in France, in Spain, yes. all the media uh, push this subject up. So I don't care which team are involved in this major thing. I really don't care. And fortunately, we are having this coronavirus around that suspended and cancelled, well, I'd say at least suspended the major competitions in yes. Portugal. Right, right, right. So I would like to think, you know, and just give a clue. Like nothing is happening in football nowadays in Portugal. Maybe it's a good time for the justice start working really hard on this process of corruption and all of this stuff involved right. in order to clean this. So, 
it's a good time because there is no more, you know, uh, scandals, let's say it like that, and news coming out, or this guy said that, try to buy this one or whatever. Yeah, that's but right. Pick up that's the right. process. They already have and they are investigating it, they are looking for it and searching during their work mm -hmm. and focus only on they have it will this thing will probably last like two or three months more with no competition that's what i'm expecting uh at least in portugal uh, yeah, yeah so true. they have to work really really hard like digging all the stuff all the files everything look around and bring to the justice yeah i don't care who who's involved or not but bring to the to justice make judgment on that right and and that's it in clean the face of portuguese football you know and end up once for all with this corruption thing if it is exist of course yeah sure uh, of course at least you course. can you can put away the suspicion you know all the suspicion you can put it away because you're going to the trial and you know, I guess it will be a good idea for for the justice in Portugal at least the one specifically directed to the to the football and sport generally speaking but specifically in football to end up this thing and and that's it take advantage of this bad situation that the country is going through and this thing can actually be applied to every country in Europe. Uh, and just one more thing to our Portuguese Federation. Yes. Um, it's just, just an advice, you know, just an advice. Um, I guess, well, and if the other competitions just wanted to take the advice too, it would be great. Uh, <clears throat> in order to not stop football all once for all, on this kind of situations, all the federations should have a backup, a backup, backup plan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you have the structure of the competition, but you should have a backup plan. If any of this kind of situation happens, uh, at least you have something to present. Yeah. And say, right. well, I don't. You have a plan. Well, the competition is like that. This thing happens. We have to stop football. At least you have something signed by all the teams and all the president, and they have, you know, an unanimous agreement that's saying, "I don't care. Just picture this thing. The backup plan is in this kind of situation, we cancel the thing. There is no more. There is no more competition. This season doesn't count. So the teams going to, you know, this is it, this is just me saying. Right, uh, right, 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 right. You can the teams going to, to the international competition next season, it's when are the teams they are qualified at the moment we stop the competition. Right. Don't have right. something solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have to be unanimous. Or another thing is it's the same teams that went last season, you know, something like that. But at least you have you need a backup plan. Yes, yes. That's the right. kind of thing. That's right, that's right. And another another thing right, that anyway. Uh, another thing that I, I would like to hear your comments about is I don't know if you see the the news about uh, Luka Javik, uh, the, the the striker, the Real Madrid striker, and all the situation that he he, he, st he decided to break to break to break up the this uh, the lockdown, the coronavirus lockdown, to return home, and now he's in a situation. Of dealing with the the Serbian justice, what are your your thoughts about that? Well, actually, the thing is, it was completely wrong for him to break down the quarantine the quarantine that he had. Well, okay, but still, we are talking about, and I'm making faith on his father's words. Because his father said, well, he decided to come from Madrid to Serbia, stay with the family, because he already made two exams and tested negative for that. So that's why he traveled. Right, right. So it's a completely irresponsible <laughs> for him <laughs> to travel because it was. But on the other hand, when you when you do two tests, 
and you tested positive and you tested negative, negative. For that thing. yeah because his girlfriend is negative and if I am not mistaken his girlfriend is pregnant so both of them tested negative and they decided to go back home near their family I don't see any big big problem on that honestly I don't because let me let me tell you this thing we are in Portugal I'm specifically I'm in, I'm in Madeira you know and we still have people coming from different countries to Madeira right. and even to Portugal right. they are they are arriving so even if you were in a lockdown I don't see the big deal on that hmm. right uh, but specifically because we are talking about it's very irresponsible for one single reason he went against the law the, the stipulations of the government right okay, fair enough right. I get I give him that. But on the other hand, I believe he was really sure because, you know, you you do two tests, you tested negative. Uh, you didn't make he didn't make just one, he made two just to make sure. Right. So it's the kind of thing that I guess the common sense I'm not saying the common sense, you know the the honest judgment, they will say, well, okay, you can, maybe you will pay a fine or something or whatever for your misbehaving, but nothing will happen. He's not, he's not going in jail. They will not put him in on trial right, and right. whatever. Uh, but probably they will make him an example for the people who try to, to do that kind of thing and make him pay. I mean, pay. Yeah, fine. pay a fine, yeah. Yes, uh, the Put some money uh, yeah, uh, on the situation. It probably really, it will be a really, really high one, but... Right, right. I don't see the... Because the guy, the guy you do that, actually, it's it's more or less naive. I'm not saying stupid, but it's naive on his side. But I still believe he was, he was 100% sure that he was okay, that's why he made two tests before travel. Yeah, and he, so, he took that decision for, for, for some reason. Uh, he didn't make it just because. He was sure of what yeah. he was doing. Yeah, we can take from that, from that, yes. Yeah, but still on this kind of situation, you cannot blame a guy that, you know, we are in this terrible situation all around Europe and then all around the world. You cannot blame a guy to test it, to test himself, submit himself two times for a test that turns out as a negative, just because he wanted to go home to his family. Right, right. You cannot blame a guy that to go home to his family. Yeah. And true. it take, and it took all the things that in his mind was right to do. The only thing he didn't took it was actually as for you know a special thing well can you please open an exception i already this is the time this turn out negative i want to go back home to my family because if they if we actually if we had done that we are not we probably were not talking about that <laughs> about this subject right so the thing is he if because he thought well i met two tests it was negative so i can go back home even against going to all the government stipulations. Right. <laughs> so it was like, because I truly believe he was he was honest and his intentions were were truthful. You know right. what I mean? Yes, he yeah, I understand. To go back home. Yeah. And he knew what he didn't have nothing. Just why a little bit irresponsible but yes. <laughs> so uh not changing changing a little bit the subject uh, we were uh, talking before we start our our podcast. Uh, we were talking about the, C the Manchester City situation. Now Manchester City is in a very deep and sharp situation because of all these uh, these with the, the the oh no I, I forgot how 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 to call it is the the financial. financial uh, yeah, the fair, the fair financial play. financial fair play, and uh, the the truth truth be told is that uh, Manchester City is trying, is really trying deep to try to 
come out of this situation, but we we have the other clubs that direct contenders from City pressuring the FA uh, and the, the UEFA to 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 keep uh, the to keep the the fine of not playing for two years. Now Manchester City can come really to lose a lot with this, isn't it? Oh yeah, they. The thing is, first of all, I guess the UEFA decision it will not turning back. They will not turn back that situation, because turning back that situation it will be saying the justice, the justice doesn't work. Right. You know what I mean? Right. They went, yeah. to, went to the well. You are spending more than you are actually having, getting. So, you are not dealing with the financial fair play. And it's not the first time that Man City did that. It's not the first time. The previous times they did that, they only they get out of that with just a fine. Well, okay. And now, because because of that not being the first time that the UEFA decided, no, you have to be punched. Right. Now the thing gets right. serious. So, two seasons without going in international competitions, it could be the beginning of the end. I don't know. I'm just saying it. Uh, at least it will be really, really bad for Man City. Uh, but as you know, you have Man City have a lot of good players, yeah, good manager. Right. I'm not seeing all of them want to be in a team that are not playing international competitions. Yeah, yeah. I'm not seeing that. That that's the, that's a. Uh reality right now yeah that's right uh, because just for playing because we are talking a few days ago we are talking about that there is no there is no longer players like Paulo Maldini or Totti or Del Piero you know those guys that have a lifetime contract with the team like before before they are football players, they are actually supporters for the team. Right, <laughs> you know right, I mean? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. No longer, that's right. you no longer purposely. Paulo Maldini had a contract of twenty years or twenty-one years. I, I don't know. I can't precise. Around that, yeah. He started with six. Around and that. it stayed his entire in Milan. Uh, Totti was the same thing. Twenty years in Roma, and never left Roma. Uh, so as you can see, even. Even on bad situations like 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 a Del Piero, you know, when the Juventus during the Calcio Cows they went to the second division and they come back, Del Piero stayed with the team. Even Gianluigi Buffon. <laughs> so, that's right, see, that's right, that's you right. No longer, you no longer have that kind of player, uh, unfortunately. So what I'm saying is there is an open window or at least a, a little narrow uh, opening on the window or at the door, call it as you want, <laughs> or players want to leave. So, as far as I have been searching, I search around yeah, for this season, the contracts ending at this season, the end of this season, it's like actually David Silva and Claudio Bravo. Well, it's okay. Uh, well, Claudio Bravo has been playing on the last games he was playing because Ederson was injured, but anyway, that's not a big deal. And David Silva, and well, 34 years old. Right. 34 years old. And okay, we can deal. And we have to be that. realistic. For instance, Claudio Bravo never was a, a fan, never was a, a preferred from the fans. That's the reality about Claudio Bravo. That, that's, yeah, okay, but that's not a big deal. You know the name of the third goalkeeper they have? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> you know, I don't. But that's the thing. Right. And Claudio Bravo is a really good goalkeeper. There is no way around. He's a good goalkeeper. No, it is. Not it the is. Best, yeah. But really good. It is. Uh, the, that's right. So, that's right. But, but those are the contracts. They are contracts ending this season, 2020. But I dig a little bit deeper and I went to the 2021 so the players on the end of the contract 2021 they are Le Roi, Le, Le Roi Sané mm -hmm. 
Sérgio Aguero. É, Aguero? Fernandinho. Yes. And Fernandinho. Yeah, Aguero and Fernandinho. And Sané. So, and Sané, you're yeah. talking about at least two key players and the other one is injured. Right, right. So, the thing is, how Man City being punished without not going to the international competitions, do the, fair, the financial fair play, can't convince these three players to renew the contract until the end of this year, until December. Right, right. That's right. a big problem. Yeah, true, true. That, that's, that's a real... A that's a real... Because idea. what can happen what can happen in here is actually they will say I don't want to renew the contract. So right. City is forced to sell them. Otherwise, we'll have players on their team against their will because they want to be there. Right, uh, yeah. I'm just true. saying. This is the kind of player they are so high on their career. They want to be on the biggest stage, you know, international yeah. competition. And they, they want to League. stay. They want to stay in the biggest no. stages. Stages, yes, that's right. That's right. So, <clears throat> so of course you can have in here an opening window for a few teams inside of England on, on the on the Premiership. Start looking around these guys, you know, sounding these guys to see if they can be reachable to do to them. Right, that's of right. Of course, you right. have you have some players. They only go after the money. You have some of them. Yeah, that's true. But when we are talking about some players, they actually play for their national teams. Uh, they want to go to the highest price, you know, and the higher price for them is like Champions League. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, I don't know how Man City will deal with this situation because, as I said before, I don't believe, I don't, I really don't believe that the men's, the, the UEFA will take the punishment for Man City because it's not the first time they didn't didn't go with the financial fair play. Uh, they have been advised at least two times, if I am not mistaken. And and now the decision was was put in outside, and I'm not saying they are coming back with the decision. So the thing will be, well, uh, how the president and, and how the club will deal with this situation when and with these players. I'm not even talking about the manager, the Guardiola, because we already know he don't want to stay there anymore. Uh, let's yeah, be honest. Sure. Uh, the players are, at least as we can see, the way they are playing, they are not playing the same way they are playing the last season or the previous one. So there is a little bit of a team there. So we can actually see, at least I can see that Guardiola wants to get out. And he knows he's getting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Eventually, at least that's what I'm seeing on that. I'm not, I'm not saying it's the higher truth, but it looks to me that they are breaking apart inside, and this situation can actually bring a lot of problems for for Man City because this kind of players wanted to play on the highest level. And it will be really, really hard for our men to see. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. Mm, right, right. So, um, yeah, that, that's a situation that we have to wait to see. But Man City is with a very sharp and deep situation here. And let's see how, let's see how this will will be solved in the in the follow the following times. And uh, another thing that uh, we were talking previously, and I want to comment on, on this because this is this is just too much funny not to not to talk about this about Newcastle United president decide to go against the law uh, and and uh, letting his shop 
uh, stay remain open because he, he says that his articles are main uh, for main necessity for the customers how can you uh, how can we see a, a situation like sports goods to be a first um, a main a necessity article <laughs> uh, I don't I, I, I really don't it's just a funny thing with there is no fun at all on that uh, it's that kind of awkward situation <laughs> so I I can see you have a Newcastle shirt uh, probably you went there when yes, yes, sure. I'm uh, <laughs> uh, I understand that Newcastle supporters are really really supporters you know they do everything for the team but I don't believe they will actually put their life on the risk because of a shirt or whatever or a sports or yeah, right, right. anything related to Newcastle so we can't understand that I, I simply can't uh, I, I don't understand uh, because when someone actually decided to have their shops open just because whenever when the government say everything out to be closed that doesn't make much sense so uh, honestly I, I don't I don't even know which arguments you know which arguments the president of Newcastle used in order to defend why he wouldn't see the shop open because for instance the thing of being a primary a primary a, a primary good you know for people it doesn't make any sense because you don't eat shirts right you know right that. right <laughs> everybody knows that so, the only thing I could see on that is actually we are with the supporters that's why we are open with we have our doors open because we are with the supporters we are not hiding but still it doesn't make any sense no it doesn't uh, because uh, we are you know this unfortunately and I speak for myself and and I speak on, on behalf of many of my club my club's fans is that we are talking about a tyrant this man is a tyrant and like uh, any other tyrant uh, is a man that so many times said that he, wo he would uh, sell the, the club and uh, I I when the time comes he just finds a way to ask for more money and the buyers uh, and the possible buyers to give up so what can I say about a man like this he's just a tyrant and any tyrant does does, uh, does uh, unbelievable things like this the, and has a man that just thinks about money and, other, and nothing else I must admit that I'm not I, I cannot be surprised well but still uh, let's let's try to put this thing away uh, let, let, let's put this thing away it doesn't matter who is a tyrant or a dictator that's not the point someone that goes against the institutions of government during this kind of crisis and situations of public health it's an unstable you know it's a delusional character yeah you know, absolutely. people have talent. so and that's the kind of thing that the, the, the english justice have to deal with that and actually punish him it will be a good idea you know uh, it doesn't matter with the fee it doesn't matter you know yeah, just right. make right. that guy an, an example for for the rest of the community the, even the british community of the england community especially just in england because this thing happened in england uh, because it's a good way because everybody especially in england most of the people actually like football and right. newcastle have a lot of fans a lot of people are into football they like to see the news and why not the government use this as a tool to show their citizens 
we have rules and these rules need to be respected in you know for the greater good right you know i don't care if if you want your shop open you can't that's you, right you went against our government stipulation so you will be punished I'm not saying putting the guy in jail, <laughs> of course not. Of course, but, but you know, financially he, he he has to to pay the fine. Yeah, or being suspended for football activities, I don't know, for a year or something like that. Something a little bit severe right. to serve as, as example to the, rest of, to the rest of the country and all the people around to understand, well, we are in a really bad situation. So, well, if the, if the president of Newcastle is being punished like that just for open or let open his shop. Well, picture me. I'm a nobody between marks. I can be punished the same way as him. So, you know, they can use this thing on a, on a, on a let's say, educational way. Yes, uh, yes, yes, right. I mean, educational way, let's say, it, it's not by punishing the guy, but actually show to the country that it doesn't matter who you are, we have a rule you need to follow. Right. So right. That's that's just my view because it's stupid. <laughs> it's just stupid. So. Uh, when someone, when your government say one thing in this kind of situation and you do completely the opposite. Right. And so um, I don't know. We are we are starting to reach the end of our of our today's talk show. I don't know if you have any final notes or anything else you would like to to point else to to our audience today. Well, I actually I had a few more subjects, but we can leave it for the next time, <laughs> uh, because as you know, unfortunately, all the competitions are stopped, and let's wait to see what's going to happen next. Right. And instead of instead of give all the subjects to the table at once uh, we we just deal good with this kind of subjects you know we have a really interesting chat uh, at least I share my ideas you know and just hope for the feedback to be okay in order you know for people that can actually share their ideas with us oh, and, right. and the only uh, the only thing I want actually that I wanted to say is like people stay safe you know, this thing will pass on and we'll be ready to be back with the football as it is. Yeah, because that's right. Because at the end right. of the day, we <laughs> like this sport. That's right, uh, that's right. So, that's just my thing. I I would like to thank you again to invite me to come back to the to the podcast and the talk. It's yeah, of course. It's good. So, and we'll, we'll keep going for, for more time, for, for longer time. Well, at least people well, will, will, so. will, will not uh, need to wait uh, two more years to, to see us again. <laughs> well, uh, that's for sure. That's for sure. That's the kind of thing I, I expect. And I wish, I wish everything the best for all the people. Stay safe. That's the most important thing. That's and right. by the way, do what, what your government told you. Because at the end of the day, they know better than us. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. And uh, with uh, Andreas' message, we we end our talk show for today. I hope you you enjoyed our talk show and you were able to stay with us till the end. And uh, we'll be here very very soon. Uh, we'll, uh, during next week, next week we'll be here again. Once again, my name is Nelson Almeida, and I was chatting with Andreas Perdigão. Stay safe, and we'll see you very very soon. Thank you.